course, Trump. My name is Osmond Kuni, and this time I'm joined with Raynad in Domdis. Raynad's the first time we're seeing you today. How you doing, buddy? I'm good, man. I'm good. Nice to be awake this early, but, you know, it's nice to be at the LAN. It's a pretty exciting event. Love the atmosphere, mm. and, uh, yeah, looking forward to the games. Yeah, so you're going to be playing this tournament as well. You qualified in one of the weeks. Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> Are you looking forward to it? Uh, do you think you're, you're well prepped? Do you think you'll be able to take it home? Uh, I'm really happy with my lineup. I think that there is one deck that I became aware of about a day right after we submitted deck lists that I wish I was playing instead of one of my lists. Mm -hmm. But aside from that, my lineup is, I think, the, the best I could have done with the knowledge I had at the time. So I'm really happy with it. Okay. Domdas, what about you? You're, you're playing uh, later on as well. Right. I'm playing later today. Yeah. Are you excited for that? I'm very excited, yeah. It's, it's my first time in a big LAN event, so I expect it to be a good time. I'm just soaking everything in, mm -hmm. having a great time. Casting's been a blast. Is that why you volunteered to cast? So it you is. Just scope just out the decks it. for the rest of the tournament? Yeah, definitely. And it's, I get you know right in there, get all the detailed explanation right in front of me by you guys. It's yeah. good. Yeah, he's actually got a notepad in front of him. He's writing down every single card, yep. every single player. So Exactly. Uh, the next match is work. going to be Trump versus uh, Koyuki. This is actually going to be the uh, last match of Group A, the elimination match. So the loser goes home. Or, well, they want not going to go home. We're not going to force them to go home. <laughs> Uh, but they um, are going to be out of the tournament. And, of course, the winner moves on to join Demigod from Group A uh, to go to that playoff match. I want to get your guys' predictions real quick. After seeing a little bit of these guys play today, after knowing the history of these two players, uh, Rained, what are your predictions for this next one? Uh, well, I haven't seen Kayuki play much, but the few times that he has been in a tournament, he does prepare for it a lot and usually does pretty well. Um, mm -hmm. Trump also has a like really remarkably high win rate in tournaments, even though he's yeah. more of an arena player. Um, and I know that you know he's played a lot of ladder leading up to this. So, a lot. Of, honestly, I could see it going either way. I don't think either player is a huge edge, but I would give it to Trump, I guess, because I've just seen him play more. And yeah, uh, yeah it seems to be. It seems like he knows what he's doing. He's comfortable with his decks. All right, fair enough. Uh, Dominus, what about you? I'm kind of in the same boat in that I haven't seen Koyuki play too much either. Uh, Trump obviously streams a lot, and I know he did really well last season with hand locking up to, into like high ladder. So I would also, I think gear myself towards Trump, but I definitely think Koyuki has, like his oil rogue should do really well against the Paladin of, um, of Trump. So yeah. it's, he definitely has good matchups. So yeah, I can go either way, definitely. Okay. Um, well, uh, let us know what you guys think. What are your predictions for the next match and for the tournament as a whole? Make sure you're joining in on the conversation. Follow us at ESL Hearthstone. Use the hashtag HLS and uh, let us know what you guys think of the tournament in general. And uh, join on the conversation about the players as well. Also, we'd like to give a big shout out to our sponsors. Plantronics and Gigabyte uh, have joined us for season two of the Legendary Series. And they're the people who make all this possible. Who allow us to fly these 16 great players out and uh, have them duke it out for a $25,000 grand prize. So big shout out to those guys. And uh, we're pretty close to being able to jump into uh, the match between Koyuki and Trump. So... I actually want to get your guys' opinion on the tournament as a whole. Is there any particular players who you're looking out for um, to take the whole thing? We've only seen a couple players from Group A. What about you, Raynad? That Raynad guy is pretty good. Yeah, well, he is. Yeah, I heard. Too. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I don't know. I think any player could take it, honestly. Everyone qualified to get their spot here. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows what they're doing. And uh, everyone's playing Hunter and Warrior. So, <laughs> I don't know. I think it's, it's, uh, it could be anyone's game. Yeah. yeah. Personally, for me, I just really want to play Raynad. Because we played in our legendary series week, and That's I lost right. twice to you. You got Once. pretty unlucky. I, <laughs> oh, 03, both I times. Oh, 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 three, three, first three, time. Yeah, second yeah. time, 2 3. But almost 0 3. And so I would love to, for us to play again. I think it would be a lot of fun. Yeah. There's a potential for that to happen in, uh, Definitely. in the playoff stage, I believe. So yeah. I'll be looking forward to that one as well. So we talked a little bit about uh, Rain Ed mentioned Grim Patron Warrior and the Hunter. Um, yeah. What are you guys' thoughts on the strongest decks right now in the meta? Well, those are the strongest decks for sure, mid-range hunter and patron warrior. And the reason is, in a conquest format, like you only need to get one win with a deck. And there's really no way to build three decks that like guaranteed beat either yeah. mid-range hunter or control warrior. You just yeah. can't do it. Mm -hmm. uh, so I feel like it's just kind of up in the air. Like You're definitely going to get wins with those two decks. Like kind of the third deck, I think, is where a lot of the differences and lineups are going to be and where... It's decided like who has the edge. Like if you pick a deck that can actually beat either patron or hunter, and then you get that matchup uh, to get the win with your third deck, then that puts you at a huge advantage because then you know you have two fairly broken decks left to to get a win with. Yeah, that's true. 
Thomas? I'm a little bit surprised in this tournament, speaking of Grim Prechen, that I think we've only seen one person, which is Koyuki, and use Grim Prechen so far, right? Yeah, so well, it's been a lot of control warrior yeah, instead. Yeah, that was very surprising to me, just because, like Rena said, I think, you know, Grim Prechen is clearly the top deck, and along with Hunter, and they're just, they're overpowered at this point, and you can almost always find at least one win with them in a Conquest format, so, yeah. And it's uh, something I, I noticed that it's kind of happened since the beginning of Hearthstone's history in tournament play, is that when there's a deck that's clearly like tier one, usually it's been Hunter and some variant, sometimes Miracle Rogue. You see players like deliberately not bring it, expect like thinking that their lineup is like geared to to tech against this, but those lineups never win tournaments from what I've seen. So um, uh, my strategy personally was just like play the broken decks this yeah. time because I've, I've, I felt like that's what does well, but I'm not surprised to see things like Control Warrior instead of Patron because it does have a favorable matchup there. So yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's wrong to, to bring Control Warrior. I just think it's a little, little weaker than, than Patron. Yeah, well, it's been successful for these guys in the group stage, but we'll see as the tournament progresses how that's going to play out. But uh, there's going to be a few more moments while the players get set up for their next match. But we actually do have Crip standing by in the Players' Lounge with an interview. Thanks, TJ. I'm here with... Uh Cabby, um, now you you haven't had uh, such a good result so far today, but uh, I think most people have agreed that you you played very well and were pretty impressed with uh, a lot of what you put forward today. Uh, now you did mention as uh, we were coming off the stage that that last game, that last epic game against Trump, you with the warrior, Trump with the with the warlock. There was there was something that the audience didn't really see throughout that game. Now what what was that? Uh, Taskmaster to begin with, and also I was running revenge, so I had two outs all along. I I was hoping for like that top deck for like ten turns in a row, and I still had removal in my deck. I still I think I had execute or shield slam. I don't remember, but I had like a lot of answers, and I got none. Now, revenge is such a weird card. I mean, I've I've played constructed in let's say the weird ranks. Um, but um, I, I still I don't I don't even remember seeing that card ever. And we're here at a tournament where you know you you have you have to pull a win with every single deck. What what's the the mindset? Because I mean you're you're at a tournament now. Maybe you can explain it to us. How does revenge fit into the game right now? Uh, the three damage away it's pretty decent. Like the the decks that push you below HP, like Paladin, like a strategy for Paladin many times is just like rush you down and they many times they do it uh, with the three threes that you just revenge or the patrons. Like it's a good counter to those styles of plays where they, their strategy is just to rush you down with small minions and it's not that bad versus Hunter. It's like one more mana where when you usually get, uh, you, can, you can afford to do that in some scenarios. Uh, obviously, sometimes it's not as good, but it was a it was a small investment that we tried the beat around, and it was doing okay. Well, that's pretty cool. I'm kind of sad you didn't do so well with it because I always like to see these tournaments kind of changing the meta on on live a little bit. And I think if if that did pull through, if that was one of the big cards, people would have actually been more eager to try it, which is which is something I really advocate for. You know, people trying new cards and trying the most out of them. So that's a little bit sad. But uh, what do you think about Trump advancing? What do you think about his match against Koyuki? Are you are you rooting for Trump now that maybe he? He got a win against you. Maybe it's it's okay if he wins a tournament. It's not a big deal anymore, or something like that. Mm, it's hard to say which one is going to win. It's like I don't know who is going to win, and it's I got along with both players, so I don't have any favorites. So I hope they get good luck and just aim, are able to play properly. And yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Cabby. Uh, sad to see you go, but maybe we'll stick around. Maybe we'll hear from you uh, here and there. But for now, we will get into the uh, the Trump Koyuki match in just a second. Uh, but first, maybe a few words from uh, TJ and the gang at the casting desk. Thank you very much, Crip. TJ and the gang. That would be a good name for a <laughs> band if we were to make one. Me being the star, of, of course. course. Uh, but we are about to jump into. The Koyuki versus Trump matchup. A quick reminder, the loser of this match is eliminated from the tournament. So there's a lot on the line for these players. Both these guys have played some pretty tough matchups today. Trump just coming off a victory. Koyuki actually coming off a loss where he missed lethal one time. He made right. a couple of big misplays. Overall played well. Uh, but I don't know how that's going to affect him. He seemed pretty quiet over in the player, player lounge as well. How does that type of thing play into uh, your mindset when you're coming off a tough loss? 
Uh, it really depends player to player. I mean, so some players really tilt hard and it really affects their play uh, moving forward. Some players can just kind of brush it off and, you know, stay... It, like, it won't really affect their play moving forward. So, uh, not having seen Kyuki play too much in tournaments, I mean, we'll see how big of an impact that has. Gomdis, are you uh, sort of afraid that you might succumb to that? Because this is your first uh, yeah. big LAN tournament as well. Uh, <laughs> you get an advantage because you get to be on the desk a little bit to sort of get the jitters right, out a little like, bit. You know, have a little fun up here before I have to play, definitely. Yeah. But um, I'm not too afraid of it. I think I'm a pretty calm person in general. I don't get too nervous at things, so mm. I think I should be okay. Hopefully, I just don't do any big misplays. But if I do, you know, I'll be on tilt maybe for like a second. But yeah. I should be able to brush it off, hopefully. If you make a big misplay, I'm going to be the one that I'm going to get on grilled, Reddit. I'm sure, by everybody here. But, you know, yeah. when I go back to the hotel room, I'm going to be like, what was that? Yeah, I'm going to take my <laughs> selfie stick, run right over the player part, <laughs> and take a picture of you as you're coming as out I'm of just the booth. Like, like a... How did you feel about that misplay there, Don? Just so. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. I would, I would never do something <laughs> like that. Okay, first matchup is going to be Koyuki with the rope, and Trump, of course, with that hand lock. Yeah, this is a, it's a matchup that used to be very heavily in Handlock's favor back when the right. common rogue deck was Miracle. But since then, I would actually give the edge to Oil Rogue. Like with, uh, you know, with the new rogue lists that are coming out, they're all playing Double Blade Flurry, Oil. And basically, the rogue deck puts on pressure before Handlock gets its uh, large threat down on turn four. But then through a combination of saps and removal, you kind of whittle down their health. And... At any turn that they threaten, the, you know, a bunch of Molten Giants and Taunts, that's yep. when you Blade Flurry and win. So I'd give a slight favorite to uh, to Rogue here in this matchup, personally. Yeah, I would have to agree with that. I think if you don't have to use your Sap super early and you can save them for when they have to Taunt up, and then you just Oil Rogue's burst potential is huge. So yeah, definitely. I think I would give a slight edge to Oil. Yeah. So Trump, people have said he's been pretty predictable with his deck choices so far. He brought Handlock, he brought Hunter, he brought Paladin. Those are the three decks that he plays on ladder. Those are right. the three decks that everybody watches and play on stream. So he knows the ins and outs yeah. of all these three. I think he, we touched on it a little bit before that he just brought what he's most comfortable with. Yeah, yeah. Which I think there's a you know a lot of merit to that definitely. And we can see it in his play. He he's made really great plays. You know, I don't think he's made any big misplays up till now. So up until now. Yes, we we gotta leave open for the future. But. Okay. <laughs> Domdis predicting huge misplays from Trump in this series. I like getting the Edwin down here. You really want to have a threat before they play their uh, turn four minion. Mm -hmm. Very true. And Edwin's just about as good as he can do turn two. He's got a pretty decent hand because he's got Paladin Shredder, which is a great card. Because it allows you to, like you said, uh, get out pressure before the big drops start coming out. All right. And um, he's got Sap and a little bit of uh, damage as well to contribute to removal for maybe like the second threat, like a Sludge Belcher after the first threat is is dealt with. Absolutely, you're going to see him life tap here. So here, you know, Trump doesn't have a turn four play. He's debating, you know, should I just play this zombie chow? I, I think I like holding it here because, you know, there's a chance he still draw Mountain Giant, and if he mm -hmm. plays the zombie chow, he won't be able to play that Mountain Giant. Right. And mostly it's just not going to do anything here. Putting two damage on Edwin isn't going to help you deal with it at all. That yeah. Hand. Yeah, Rogue's got some options. Do you play the SI? Do you just weapon up? If you weapon up, you do have the option to use that SI damage on a minion that's played, so... True. If you just play the SI agent here, are you really worried about... Not really playing around Hellfire that much, but Hellfire doesn't really do much to your board. You'd have to have, like, Hellfire and then Mortal Coil the following turn, so... All right. Playing that's it just like this is sort of applying a little bit more pressure. Twilight Drake is a huge draw. Yeah. Without that, Trump would have been really far behind. Yep, Trump must have been really happy about that draw. If you don't draw onto the Twilight Drake there, you pretty much play defensively for almost the entire game. Definitely. Because you aren't really doing much on that turn except maybe like playing a tempo BGH just to try and stall some of the damage. Mm -hmm. And in that case, it's just like when, when you get to the point as a handlock player where you have to play defensively every turn, you're suboptimally using the cards that you might need later on, yep. like your taunt cards or even like anti kill bots, and uh, it's just downhill. Yeah, I don't mind using a sap here. I mean, you do want to hold on to them, like Thomas uh, mentioned earlier, but it's still like just your best play here. If right. you play just the shredder, you have to either trade your creatures in, use backstab, or you have to be vulnerable to shadow flames. So this is pretty much the best option. Definitely. That's a huge draw. Yeah. That's going to allow him to clear the board with coil. But 
And Luck doesn't have any Molten Giants yet, and that's definitely great for the Rogue because, uh, you know, Kyuki doesn't have a big Blade Flurry set up yet. He doesn't have a Blade Flurry in hand, he doesn't have oil or preparation, any of those things that he needs to deal with Molten Giant when they come down. It's a bit early for him to have piece together 12 damage, but oh. it's, it comes pretty quickly when you're talking about Rogue Gear. Oh, second Ooh, sap! That's a good draw. Azdrake such a fantastic card on an empty board against Warlock. I mean, it doesn't die to Dark Bomb, doesn't die to Hellfire. You don't really want to Siphon Soul a, a five-mana minion that right. already drew a card. Yeah. Sometimes it doesn't die to Implosion. Yeah. If nope. it's like a Demon Handlock it's or something. Malagos Lock. Yeah. It's actually becoming really popular recently. A lot of players use that to climb to Legend yeah, uh, at the beginning of this season. I think it's just a fun deck to play, too. Is it? Malagos is just... Is it is it actually strong, strong, though? What are its strengths based off of, like, regular old hand lock? It's, uh, it's less predictable. That's pretty yeah, much no. it. That's true. Yeah. That's pretty like much it. It burst you out of nowhere. Yeah. We've seen many times in Legendary Series that uh, the Malagos row backfires because the first soul fire discards the second soul uh, fire. Yep. Or something like that. I think there was a long streak of it, right? Where it happened yeah. like to the same person three times to in a row. To Red Paint, who's oh. actually sitting over there in the player's yep, lounge with a is. little bit of a smirk on his <laughs> face. He actually wants to cry right now because he's like, <laughs> And yeah, he's still here. So those talk, memories. Yeah. yeah, he still won that week that he brought Malagos yeah. to Warlock, so. I was thinking about the prep sprint. I like it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a... Eh, it might be better to just sap and shredder. Yeah, I don't know if you're going to find time. Well, yeah. And then you just prep sprint next turn. And you're almost always going to find an answer to, like a more efficient answer to Sludge Poacher as well. Mm -hmm. Like right. Eviscerate. Right, yep. Well, he's expecting to backstab the zombie shop here and sap the Sludge Belcher. Save Eviscerate for the burn. The base. Mm -hmm. No Blade Flurry yet, yeah, though. I'll, yep. Double Deadly Poison, though, so that could be... Uh, I was thinking of using that instead of Sap. Save the Sap from Molten Giant. Okay. Right. Yep. I think I like that, saving the Sap. It's a fine play. I don't, I don't like not backstabbing here. Yeah, I think you definitely backstab. I would have backstabbed and gone face for four. But this is fine, too. Uh, definitely not not incorrect, I would say. A little risky against Dark Bomb, though. Yeah. Because you're not really at a point where you want to like save face damage, because you're already... Right, You've already enabled Molten Giant. If yeah. he has double Molten Giant, he can tap, play double Molten Giant, and taunt them up yep. in the same turn. So it really doesn't matter holding back anything. But Right so. here with no taunters, though, it's a little bit scary. And Trump has really been dealing with a rough draw. I mean, that turn four Twilight Drake helped, but no, no taunts is the Molten kind of a, a turn after he wanted it, I think. Yep. In Molten Healbot. Yeah, I think life tapping think isn't bad. That's what I would do. If you life tapped, played Molten, and then used Teal Bod, mm -hmm. he'd be at 18 health at the end of the turn. I think that's with the Nasher Drake on the board and a five damage dagger. I don't know, nine damage at least. Uh, double Eviscerate actually. He'd need like Blade Flurry, Temple Eviscerate. Like I suppose even if he draws Sun Fury Protector or Dark Bomb, he wouldn't even play them this turn. So right. I guess life tapping is just bad. It's better to just Molten and, and Heal Bod. Dr. Boom's not an option. <laughs> it's turn Boom. seven, man. It is turn seven. That I mean. is that is ambitious. You could do that. He would need three damage. <laughs> That's what I always teach my friends when they're first loading. When you have Dr. Boom turn seven, you play. Yeah. Great advice. <laughs> great advice. Teaching the new Good player base here. how to really play a bit of Hearthstone. <laughs> it does weave in the hero power here. It's going to be right. good for next turn, but... Let's see, is that not by Lipo, right? No. He's just going for it? Did he miss count? Leaving him at one? Mm -hmm. I think he, he from lied. him pausing, I think he must have miscounted. Oh, well, this this three-mana flame strike draw card will be good enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, like, called a mulligan halfway through his play. He's like, yeah, maybe I'll go with something else. He played it off well. He's like, oh, yeah. I have lethal. Oh. I like just not attacking here. Made it completely look like this. That was, yeah, I think I would not attack. You have two blade flurries in your deck. Yep. Molten's still going to die next turn. You don't care about it attacking anything. Going face doesn't matter. You're going to drop blade flurry for that damage eventually. All right, Q disagrees, gets in there for three. It's not Jirax's turn yet. 
seems like he's playing really quickly. He's not thinking about his plays too much. He's just sort of throwing things down. Right. I think that's what happened to him a little bit in the last series during that Grim Patron turn where he didn't quite count out the damage. So Yeah. He's like, oh, I think I have lethal. Right. Let me just go for it. He threw his damage and yep. very recklessly and ended up missing. So, Luckily for Kyuki, though, Trump's draw has just been kind of abysmal this game. It's so. been abysmal. Oh. Yeah. Uh, siphon a 4-3 Drake. It's already gotten a ton of value. And Kiki's going to look for lethal this turn. Sprint is probably not going to find it, so mm -hmm. I expect to see an Azure Drake. The early sap ended up being a really huge deal because Trump has not been able to replay the Twilight Drake that he played. Those right. Twilight Drakes have been sort of dead in his hand the whole game except for the first one he played. So Especially because Trump never has, hasn't drawn a taunter. So it yeah. He said to it's tap a... every turn and then play defensively. Um, it's a two-mana assassinate. It's a pretty good card. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Not mm, just he wants to very <laughs> close. <laughs> this yeah. guy's tough. All right, there we go. So we're definitely gonna see Draxus come down, and Trump is actually he's in a good spot. He's in a good spot somehow. This somehow. is amazing. He was so far behind this game, and he, he actually has like a very reasonable chance of winning. He just needs to find a defender of Argus or a Sun Fury to protect himself from some oil burst. I think the chance of that is pretty high, seeing how he's gone through so many of his cards. Yeah, hasn't seen either. Yeah, he's got that Shadow Flame anyway to to shoot his Ancient Watcher or Infernal. So there is still a lot of direct damage left in Koiki's deck. I mean, we haven't seen either Blade Flurry. He still is holding on to an Eviscerate. He's got a Sap to maybe get through like one big target. We haven't seen either Oils either, right? Yeah, yeah that's actually a huge draw, Salsi Deckhand. That is a card that. Trump won't be able to interact with to prevent oil. Right. Uh, so it's going to allow Kyuki's oils to actually threaten lethal, even on a board where Trump doesn't expect it. Yeah. Yep. Still hasn't been able to. Uh... Well, he utilized this sprint earlier, but the second sprint is actually going to be pretty good because it's going to allow him to get deeper in his deck before Trump has a chance to big up, build up a huge board and maybe start threatening him with damage. Yeah, we're definitely going to see a Shadow Flame, the Ancient Watcher here. Yep. I think it has to come out. What's it going to be? Ooh. Let's turn around. I mean, that Mountain Giant is not what Trump wanted to see. He really needed a taunt. Yeah. Really badly, yeah. <laughs> it's been so long. How many cards has he been through? It's At least crazy. half his deck. Very high chance he's dead this turn. Not well, two, quite. He can seven. sprint, but I think he needs oil plus prep in order to have lethal. Right, yeah. It's not that unlikely. I'd have to see how many cards are left in hand. I don't think we've seen either prep either, right? No, we, we see a Walmart. Oh, we saw one prep. True. Harrison Jones. There's a prep, but... It's not quite enough. Not quite enough. Yeah, yeah South Sea oil with the weapon already equipped is exactly nine damage. I think I would South Sea right now. Because at this point you have the flurry, so your oil is going to deal that damage. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you don't Salsi now, you might never get the charge dam, like the minion damage off. It's a really good point, yeah. True. But I suppose if you draw that oil, you have lethal anyway, with or without that two damage. So right. Might as well hold the it. Oh so. no! Still no taunters. Wow. And now he doesn't even have the the card draw mechanic to be able to start t getting a couple cards a turn. So yep. he's just top decking just like the rest of us. <laughs> Well, Kayuki is sitting on lethal, so I think that's just game. It should just be game, yeah. Unless Kayuki misses it. <laughs> but he seemed really eager to go for the face before. Right, before, so. I mean. The people's champion of Twitch yep. chat. Smork every turn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Seems like every turn he like positions his cursor at the face at least a little bit. Right. Just like need to go to the face. It's like the backwards uh, elimination. Like he starts at the face and then goes to the creatures. <laughs> right. Where most people like go to the creatures and they're like, they're oh, like, maybe I'll go nah. face. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> He's trying to figure out the best line of play to keep him alive, but right. it's just, there's no good play. The best players like to put as much power on the board as possible. Mm -hmm. To hope, hope that he doesn't have turn, damage. But... Yeah, Mountain yeah. Giant's the most likely card to survive. A blade flurry. Yep. The right play here from Trump was to play his turn within like five seconds, uh, so that Kyuki doesn't have as much time to think about having lethal. But that oil drop. <laughs> that oil yeah. just. Oh, he prepped it out too. Here we go. 
All right, well, it looks like Koyuki, after a pretty interesting game, goes ahead and takes the first game in the series. He's two wins away from securing a spot in the playoff stage on Sunday. And Trump is on the ropes. Last last match he had against Kabi, he was up 2-0. And now down 0-1 in the series. Yeah, that's an important win. Definitely. Was, he definitely had a lot of bad luck there with those draws, even the whole, entirely the whole game. Yeah, definitely. Trump, Trump's uh, Trump's draws that game were pretty rough, but you know, Handlock's a pretty strong deck and definitely pull out definitely. a win still. Definitely. Do we know uh, what are, what are Kiki's other classes? It's he has Patron Warrior and Hunter. Okay, so that Patron Warrior is a big deal because Control Warrior it's actually favored against Handlock, whereas right. Patron Warrior is disadvantaged. So, yeah. assuming Trump's playing double Hellfire, Shadow Flame, all those board clears, then definitely Trump can definitely still pull a win out. Yeah, it seems Koyuki actually got the memo about the strong decks. So he brought Patron Warrior, he, he brought Hunter, and then the, the third deck that Raynan was talking about that can sort of differ. And his choice was Rogue. Which is pretty yeah. strong on its yeah. own as well, obviously, as we saw. It's like you look at um, a tier list, the meta tier list, and he's like, oh, okay, Patron Warrior, Hunter, and Rogue. Yep. Let's go for it. I'll take those three decks. Definitely expected to see a lot of that, but surprisingly, we haven't. No. But two Paladins in Group A. Two Paladins. You're happy heal. about that, Domdus. I like, yeah, I like me some Paladin, definitely. Yeah. Koyuki was the person I thought would bring Paladin, but ended it's, up not. It's a bit of an interesting mind game here, though, because Trump has Handlock and two decks that have completely polarized matchups. Like, he needs that to get matched up against Patron, whereas, like, if he gets paired up against Midrange Hunter, there's almost no way he wins. Yeah. So, yeah. it's kind of an interesting mind game uh, from both players. Like, he's wondering, you know, do I bring the Patron out now? Do I bring out the Hunter? What is, what is Trump going to go with? Most players stick with the deck they just lost with, so mm -hmm. stage one of thinking, I guess, is Trump will stick with Handlock, in which case Kiki wants to pick Hunter. Stage two is he tries to next level that, pick Patron, and uh, <laughs> we'll see. And then it goes deep down the rabbit hole exactly. of, of mind games, Yes, yep. where nobody knows what the other player is going to do. Trump was actually pretty vocal about, um, he, he knows his decks in and out, but he's he has trouble with the conquest format and like uh, the strategy behind deck picking. Somebody so. needs to get that man a six-sided die. <laughs> <laughs> Just roll the dice exactly. Um, but we'll have to see if that's going to play into his decision. He in his other his first matchup of the day, he kept the same deck all the way through. But uh, this one, he actually uh, yeah, switched it changed. up a little bit. Going with the paladin. Mm -hmm. Definitely, uh, definitely what he wanted here: paladin into hunter yep. or handlock into warrior. So. Didn't see the last card, but it looks like the hand's actually Crazy decent. Eh. He'd want to see like Zombie Chow if he's running it. Right. But the Shield of Mini Bot is definitely a nice consolation prize. Oh, yeah. See that good old Leper Gnome greetings. <laughs> <laughs> and now he even has the muster to follow that up. It feels like 98% of my Hunter games on ladder yeah. are, are open with Leper Gnome. The Leper Gnome. Greetings. In that order. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. Can't, they can't wait to get it out yeah. and get you for two. Mm -hmm. It's like they throw away their whole hand. I'm like, okay, I got a chance. <laughs> Lepernome greetings. Yep. Ah, God. He does have the Shield Mini Bot now, which he doesn't have a really good curve. He can Hero Power next turn, but this means that the Shield Mini Bot's going to trade. Yeah, Coin Hero Power there was a viable play. A little risky against Glaive Zuka. It's actually the only card in the game that uh, Mini Bot plays around, but definitely, definitely worth it. He misses turn two, though. No Mad Scientist, no Haunted Creeper. Yeah. Just the Hero Power in turn two. That's not what you want to see, especially against Paladin, who has so many early tools to sort of stop the momentum Definitely. of Hunter. Trump must have been really happy to see that. Yeah. yeah. Trump didn't have a turn two play of his own either, though, but that Paladin Hero Power definitely a little bit stronger early game than Hunter's. Yep. A lot of them are. Yeah. It's like anything that interacts with the board, like, just... Trump's the Hunter Hero Power. No pun intended. <laughs> Alright, Muster. Who's the beatdown now? Unleash the dudes. Unleash the dudes. <laughs> the value. Uh, it, this is actually a, a really great curve for Trump as well. Um, yeah. He's, he's got... Right now, like, True Silver Champion, he has something to hit it with if he chooses. Then he's got Sludge Belcher. He's got Anti-Heal Bot as some heal to get him through that, that point. Kayuki didn't draw Mad Scientist or Haunted Creeper, and he just drew a Stranglethorn Tiger. <laughs> someone someone should, uh, should let him know that Blackrock and Extramus are, in fact, out. <laughs> <laughs> 
Stranglethorn Tiger brings me back to days of Dreamhack when I played that guy. Oh, Did it go well for you? Yeah, pretty well. Okay. I, got, I got third. I played double yeah. Snapjaw, double Stranglethorn. Ooh. Maybe <laughs> maybe Koyugi was... I need to do prep on the players that are in this tournament. Let me look up Rain at. Oh, you ran Stranglethorn Tigers. That's a great idea. Brilliant. Genius. Sludge Belcher. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's definitely the play. There's an argument for True Silver because you have two. Right. But, but dealing with the Pal the Trader that it's at one attack is not really that big of a deal. Maybe mm -hmm. pushing for damage and being the one who's applying pressure is good, but then you open up a Stranglethorn Tiger to just smack you in the face because you're not playing Sludge Belcher. So I don't know if you want to be taking that five game. It's definitely a bit of a clunky draw from Kayuki. I mean, he's already at 14 against a control paladin. <laughs> the yeah. correct play this turn was drawing <laughs> Unleash the Hound. Yeah. Uh, definitely a misplay, though. Definitely yeah, a misplay. Huge misplay. But uh, he's still in it. I guess you slam high main and hope for the best. Yep. That line of play is actually usually really great for, for hunters because usually you get to that point, especially with uh, with the hybrid hunter that's that's running around. This seems like a standard. Well, I don't know. He had leper gnome, so it's it, yeah, yeah, it's sort of hybridy. Um, usually you just <laughs> plop it down a savannah high main on turn six. It's like okay, well, I I pretty much won the game. Played itself, right? Yeah. yeah. But hey, like Rainhead said, he's at fourteen health, yeah. so they noticed the life drop so fast. Mm hmm. All right, well, no great way to deal with this high main right now. Nope. Betty wishes he still had that Peacekeeper. Yep, Paladin is one of the decks that can deal with high main the best. Peacekeeper is pretty much the best thing you can have against it. Maybe Hex is better, but... Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, unfortunate to not have the second one here. So if he just goes, like all face right now. Plops on the true server champion. Hero powers up. He can do eight damage. Yep. Put him at six. I think that's the play. He's just thinking about yeah. this, this strangle thorn. I mean, that's a five two. Is it worth trading two minions in just to take that damage off the board? I think it might be. Yeah. If you go all face, you set up for lethal next turn with just a swing and a consecration. But that gets punished yeah. very heavily by like Houndmaster, mm -hmm. Misha, Lotheb. I think the face, I think he's going for it. Yeah, I really do think at this point you just gotta yeah, go. For yeah, it. yeah, yeah. This is this is better than playing Tiger for sure. This is the best chance of winning at this point. You can't win a long game. You're at 26 health, so you're not worried about him killing you the next turn. You have no nope. heal bot, so you could maybe even buy yourself another turn after that. <laughs> so, Glaive Zuka, that is not a taunt. We need some. That is raw. Need to skillfully roll a Misha right here. <laughs> here we go. Alright, the backup plan is uh, to get a taunt from the Shredder. Alright, we need a Noyatron. Here we go. A Noyatron. Skill shot right here. Nat Pagel! Howdy. <laughs> <laughs> Koyuki, the, the last time I, I saw Koyuki in a competitive tournament, Nat Pagel was actually running every deck. Yeah. Mm. That, I remember that meta. Yeah. Lost a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> was that back when Tink Master was a thing? Oh, yeah. Good yeah, times. Uh, Tink Master and Nat Pagel were the two auto includes. Yeah. Nat Pagel uh, drew a card at the end of your turn. So yep. you played on a turn and then have a 50% chance to draw a card at the end of that turn. And Tink Master Overspark was targeted. Yep. Not that random. So if you're Rain Ad. My, you can my, turn something into a devil sword every single right. time. Every time. I think Always I have like lucky. a 90% squirrel rate <laughs> on my stuff. <laughs> and a 90% devil sword on their okay. stuff. Alrighty, well, it's going to go ahead and concede out. And Trump is going to take a victory in this series. He's going to tie it up one to one, finding a victory with that paladin. And that's sort of what we expected going into that one. Right. It didn't play out as. as I expected it to, but the end result was sort of what happened. Paladin being the face, the face goer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The matchup definitely can go either way. I mean, <laughs> even even though Paladin definitely has a lot of cards that interact favorably against Hunter, you know, Paladin still has a life total and Hunter still has kill command. So I've right. seen I've seen crazier swings happen. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, well played by Trump, ties it up. Yeah. So um, decks remaining for these guys. Trump still has the handlock remaining. Mm -hmm. uh, he still has Hunter as well for himself. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, uh, Koyuki has the Hunter and Patron Warrior.
Yeah, as far as picking their next decks, what Trump, what's going on in both their minds really is Trump trying to get his handlock paired against Kayuki's patron, and then yeah, Kayuki definitely. trying to avoid that. Definitely. There's still a lot of mind games there. Kayuki might stick with the hunter, and Trump might pick handlock into it, which would, uh, I guess, not be the worst case. Maybe that's the safest pick. It's really yeah. tough to say. Yeah. Again, a lot of times you get into it, you say, well, there's mind games going on, but in the end, unless you really know a player's tendencies, like you have a paper that says, oh, 80% of the time, this is what he does, like right. a consistent statistic, uh, then it's always just a point. But it looks like we're going to see Hunter versus Hunter. Get your smork emos ready. Because <laughs> we're in for a lot. Yep. Both these players are doing wrist stretches right now, making sure they have that range of motion to point the cursor at the face. All the way up to the face. Yep. Yeah. Trump's psyching himself out. Koyuki as well. <laughs> that that player pod is actually pretty intimidating. Uh, they got they have some uh, some like Hearthstone props in there, and it, it it looks really cool. But it's also like they they pump white noise in it. Yeah, that scares there, me. You're in there by yourself with, with just with the other player. You can like. Turn her over and look in, look them right in the eye. Yep. So it's like, oh, I'm glad I'm a caster. Yeah. When it comes to that, I walked by the player pods and the white noise. I was like, I thought I was like watching Poltergeist or something. I was yeah. like, something's gonna come and kill me. I was scared. You're left with your own thoughts, and that's about it. it. Yep. And if some players, more than others, don't want to be left too much with their own thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm looking forward to it. I don't have too many thoughts to be left with. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Well, that was a pretty strong opening to go first on. Getting that one drop when you don't have the coin is so important in this mm -hmm. matchup. And even the scientists follow up. Yeah. Nice. It's something that I don't like saying too much, but mirror matchups are the most susceptible to early draws, and especially with aggressive decks, because if one player draws the curve, right. like the, the one that you want to see the most, and the other player doesn't, mm -hmm. it's, it's like, how are you going to come back? Right. You can't race because they've already got such a big head start on you. So having that Leopard Gnome and that good curve early on is actually super important, especially in this matchup. Yeah, it looks like Trump here has two blanks. This is not what he wants, a kill command on the Hunter's Mark. That second Haunted Creeper ties it all together. That was a great draw. Yeah, yep. Hunter's Mark can be pretty effective. Uh, actually, that Haunted Creeper Hunter's Mark is a combination that's like a keep against a lot of decks. Yeah, definitely. Um, but in this matchup, I'm not sure how effective not it's so going to be. Not so much, I don't think. Yeah, I would but love to see a Freezing Trap here. Yeah. This is a, it's a card that's so easy to blank later in the game within a Leech of the Hounds, just returning the Hound to hand. But in this case, it's perfect. Let's your Leopard Gnome keep out DPSing them. Oh, I'm just going to go with the Haunted Creeper instead. That's a surprising play. A lot of times you'll see if you get a Freezing Trap on a card like Mad Scientist or Haunted Creeper on that turn two, mm -hmm. it's so hard for them to replay it in the game because right. they uh, against a fast deck like this, it's, mm -hmm. they're thinking, oh, on turn four, what am I going to do? Play a 2-2 two -two or like play a Pilot Shredder or something yeah. like that. Exactly. So, I mean, back in the Harvest Goal in that game, before uh, Next Rams was even out, Freezing Trap was a pretty common turn two play out of mid-range Hunter, but you're starting to see it less and less. It's a card that'll oftentimes keep in my opening hand in the Hunter Mirror, just if I don't have a Creeper or the Scientist yet, because it's, uh, I mean, it's just like a consistent turn two play that's going to answer their turn two play. Yeah. Definitely strong with your bow, too, if they choose not to attack into it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Animal Companion, here we go. Here we go. we, we actually we... have at least, I don't think we've seen a Huffer today. Oh yeah, actually, I don't think we've seen a Huffer. No Huffers! Pretty crazy. It's because Blizzard was here earlier. Yeah. They're like, okay, we're here. Someone should alert them to the bug. We're a little yeah. bit scared. <laughs> no Huffers. Yeah. All Turn Leox. Off Huffer. What a surprising amount of Leox today. That wasn't the worst Unleash the Hound's turn, I guess. But Animal Companion is better, yeah. So, do you trade into the Mad Scientist here to try and get a trap with the Spectral Spider? Because that's one of the best targets you're going to be able to get it on. Yup, it is a little scary if it's explosive, though. You get absolutely wrecked. You, yeah, you'd get wrecked really hard. Yeah. And then you're on the risk of Snake. I think he's been following Trump's matches closely. He knows that I think he's only running Freezing Trap. Yeah. Okay. So, I think he knows. That's a really good read, and that's that's that situation right there sort of plays to the importance of um, doing the research, even just watching the matches of your opponents a little bit before 
So you know, you can say, oh, well, I've seen 28 cards in his deck, and it's been two freezing traps, and that was it. It allows you to make plays like that a lot yep. more confidently. Definitely. I would like to see him play freezing trap and quick shot here. Nine, it feels nine. pretty bad to quick shot a 1-1, one, one, but you you have your turn 5 and 6 planned out already. You have to. Okay. okay. Interesting. I guess this is fine. This lets you save yeah. freezing trap for your opponent's high main, assuming that they don't have Unleash the Hounds late game. Yeah. Uh, I suppose that is a Leoc. It would just sit there and play if uh, he played the trap and just kind of buff minions for the rest of the game. Right. Unleash the Hounds for two damage each at some point with a lot of the tokens on the board would be pretty devastating. Mm -hmm. I wonder. He's at four mana, so Knife Juggler Unleash the Hounds is not a viable option. This curve yeah. is a little bit weird here. He can play Knife Juggler, weave in a hero power, and then trade in his Spectral Spiders to protect it. He can just... Unleash the Hound to try and push through, but there's going to be better turns to use it. You can rock that three mana Spectral Spider. Yeah, just play a three mana Spectral Spider and go face. That's, go face. That seems strong. Pretty That's unlucky, the true hunter though. way. Pretty unlucky to draw Hunter's Mark double kill command. There are Definitely. very like few cards in the matchup that you don't want to see, and these are it. Mm -hmm. I mean, he has all of them. I think we've seen it a lot today, actually. <laughs> double. He is rocking the three mana and Whoa! going face. Yeah, well. You, I like it. That was a good. We called that. Yeah, well, Knife Juggler Unleash the Hounds is something that you want to keep for the combo. Because you know that right. at most points in the game, you're going to get value out of it. But it is punished heavily by low Theb. I'm not sure if that's something that plays into your mind. But turn five, like, what's a power play for Hunter turn five? It's usually low Theb. I mean, this is sick because uh, it's like the only line of play that let Trump Hunter's Mark this turn. Although, now that he drew low Theb. Now he's got low Theb, so. Yeah, it's probably just going to be better. Yep. All right, well, that's where the Hunters start trading blows. Kiyuki has to decide if he's going to play around that Hunter's Mark and trade into the low thumb of Trump. I think it's a good idea, if, especially if you're thinking of playing high main, because you want to protect the high main. All I right. know it feels good throwing a five damage swing right. into See, the base. The counter oh, argument wow. to that is Smork. Like, smork, <laughs> yes, Smork. <laughs> Always Smork. Yeah. It's like drawing a kill command right there and playing it for zero. Smorking him down. Well, he can he can unleash the hound's kill command and clear something. But reason, trap was an exceptional draw. Yeah, yeah, I think that needs to be played. That was one of the only ways Trump could have caught up, actually. So now he just needs to dodge a charge minion from Kiyuki, and uh, he, I mean, he could just be in great shape. Yep. The only thing Trump is deciding on right now is, do I play this knife juggler before my Unleash the Hounds to potentially start attacking with it? It exposes it to quick shots and weapons, but uh, it does get more damage down. But he might also want to hold on to it, use it with that Unleash. Personally, I don't think he's going to have the time for all of that. Yeah, I think commands. he just plays it. Yeah. So you Hunter's Mark the low dip here, pop it, pop into it with the uh, Spectral Spider, yep. throw down the knife juggler, play for the trap and hero power. Yep, exactly what I... He has a, he's at a health disadvantage here, but with a Lothab on the board that doesn't have Ooh. an answer. Really? And, and just kill command face? No, he's gonna freezing trap. Freezing trap? Right? Okay. Interesting. That seems weird. That was, was kind of interesting. I it, it, it allows him to play around second freezing trap, but he could have just done the same thing next turn with Unleash. Right. I, I guess he just, thinks this is the best he's gonna do with it. I get getting two. Dogs? Yeah, I guess. Well, getting them earlier does let them attack earlier. And I guess he's thinking he can't beat an opposing at Leash the Hounds anyway, because it would destroy his Freezing Trap. Yeah. Right. So he's choosing not to play around that card, which is good. Wow, Kiyuki's in a terrible spot because of this yeah. play. <laughs> terrible. And that's where we see like the like how potentially amazing Freezing Trap is. Mm -hmm. If if they don't have the Unleash the Hounds, it's a great card. One of the best answers in the game to Death Rattle minions. But if they do have, you know, that Unleash the Hounds like Trump did, then all of a sudden Kiki's Freezing Trap is just useless. Yeah. Whereas, whereas for Trump, it was the only card he could draw to win the game. Yeah, usually in this matchup, the first player to have to start playing defensively, like on the back foot, is the one that usually ends up falling. So Koiki's in that spot right now where... Uh, this turn, he's not going to really be able to push for much. He's having to clear the board because he's afraid. And uh, now he needs to try and draw into a charge creature or something that's going to allow him to pop the freezing trap. Or else 
that high main is just going to be pretty much a dead card. Yeah, that was definitely his best line of play there. Levzuka got to clear the hounds. And I guess hope to draw hounds of his own to get through the freezing trap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Eagle Horn Bow is not a bad draw. Yeah. You want to play kill commands here because you don't have a beast. Like while you do. Like while you have the hound here on the board, try and get some of the kill command damage in, at least one of them. I think if you don't play kill command, you... Like playing bow deals six damage. Like basically I think the game is over next turn. So like playing the bow would deal six damage instead of five. So playing the bow is better than playing the second kill command. Okay. Mm -hmm. You could also just play juggler and hero power, which is like the same I wonder. as uh, as kill commanding. Mm -hmm. One thing right. worth noting though is Trump has drawn a double haunted creeper already. So he probably won't get a cheat beast for the second kill command if he doesn't do it now. But yeah. So I think you play one of the kill commands for the beast reason you mentioned, and then you hold on to the other one because it's just more efficient to weave in a hero power. Yeah. The Night Traveler is still pretty threatening. So it's like, okay, well, if you... The difference between their attack is two. Like you were saying, it's sort of just like playing a kill command. The kill mm -hmm. command for three, but if you kill the Hound and ignore the Knife Juggler, then it'd be a difference of two damage anyway. He doesn't even have a way to deal with the Knife Juggler, even if he wanted to, without taking the three damage anyway. All right. Because of the freezing trap here. Yeah, the bow play is actually a lot better. Because the only way Trump loses is if that freezing trap is procced. So yeah. you might as well get bow down. It's at least nine six damage. One. Good chance it's nine. I can't believe he turned it around. That freezing trap draw was amazing. It was huge. Yeah, he was on the back foot the entire start. With the leper gnome into the mad scientist. Yeah, yeah it was yeah, definitely just a two outer. Yeah. So let, let's count the damage for the next turn. So he's going to have five damage from Hero Power Bow. Yep. So that's going to put him at eight. So he'll just need to piece together two damage from somewhere along with the double kill commands, which will do six total. Um, so, so he's going to... Oh, no, he wouldn't be able to because that would be uh, all of his mana. Freezing Trap stops it, so I don't think he can right. win this turn. Nope. Yeah, he cannot win this turn. And then we got to look at how much damage can Koyugi do next turn. Yeah, he's got... 10 on board, actually 11 I suppose, the 7 power high main. Mm -hmm. And uh, kill command draw won't be lethal, but if he plays Leroy, he has it. Mm -hmm. so yeah, he could draw <laughs> the Leroy. Leroy. Another out is quick shot into something. Definitely. Quick shot into quick shot. Yeah, or quick, shot, quick command, shot, kill command. Bow. Yeah. Quick shot into Huffer. So it seems like the play here is just a I think you have to go face. Like, you have to proc the, the trap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. all right. Trump is doing some explosive trap math and all that good stuff just to, to make sure. But uh, I do think attacking is the right play. I guess he's wondering about what to attack into as well. Because he could put that damage on a high main. That might matter. Quickly. All right. Nah. There nope. We go. Let's go. He's afraid of snake traps. All right. All right. So it's going to be... Trump knows the game is over next turn. Oh, I like this play. Only using one. He's already seen Lothab, right? So there's no reason to... Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. That scientist is not that what he needed. Is not it. He throws his hand up. He's yeah. saying, oh, man. Uh, the reason Trump didn't play high main like most players would have there is because if he did, it would have actually given Kiyuki... A dog off of Unleash the Hounds, which should have destroyed a freezing trap. So, heads up play there. Very heads up. Definitely good to kill command, he's in lethal anyway. Yeah, Trump's gonna take it. Wow. Yeah, very well played. You mentioned the freezing trap being sort of the turning point in that matchup. And that's actually a big win. Getting those mirror matchup wins is actually pretty huge because it's sort of just a toss up. It's not something that you can plan to win. Right. Um, and so, when you get into that matchup and are uh, you the one who takes the victory? It, it it's always feels good. And on the other end, Koyuki is probably... He's one game away from elimination from this tournament. He's down 2-1 to one in this series. If he loses one more game to Trump, then he's out of the tournament. He goes home with $200 instead of potentially $10,000. He does have the advantage of, of knowing exactly the uh, class that Trump's going to pick, though. Right. And... Yeah, like you mentioned, that Freezing Trap draw was such a big turning point, but an even more subtle draw that was equally important 
was that Haunted Creeper on his first draw. Because mm -hmm. he gave him a perfect curve. Without that, he would have had the hero power turn two, yeah. or play a trap, just do something kind of awkward. So that was pretty important, too. Yeah. Definitely uh, let him keep up and then snowball that into a win eventually. All right, so Trump has... Play handlock, right? Handlock remaining. Now, I think the uh, Hunter versus Handlock match is going to be pretty decisive, but... Patron Warrior versus Handlock, yeah. on the other hand. That may also be very decisive. <laughs> right. Just <laughs> the, the other, other way. way. Just the, yeah, exactly. Uh, it's a matchup that really depends on how the Patron deck is built. We're starting to see a lot more variety in Patron lists lately. Um, most of the highest ranked players on the NA server are playing Patron, but they all have a few little tweaks as far as tech choices go. So uh, Big Game Hunter starting to become more popular, so if that's in there, it's definitely going to help Kayuki a lot. I've seen some of them play Brawl, which helps in the mirror, but it would also help a lot against uh, Warlock. Definitely. And, uh, yeah, I mean, we see some lists with more card draw and, yep. and you know, burst. That, that's definitely helpful as well. So Koyuki's list is all about the card draw. Uh, he runs a lot of cycle okay. in the patient where... It's exactly um, what he wants, I think, in this matchup. Yeah, no BGH, no something like... He doesn't have commanding shout either, so right. there's not tools that are traditionally considered the cards that you put in to specifically target handlock right um but the cycle is really good because it allows him potential to draw into those combos that he needs early like the frothing berserkers stuff to push through uh earlier on in the game oh, oh wow that is <laughs> the dream wait shield slam yeah he runs shield oh, block shield slam as yeah, well he runs Warrior. double shield oh. block double shield slam okay well that that explains why there's uh no BGH, you don't need it then. I yep. would keep all three of those. I am the, I would keep that entire hand. I think I would keep the entire hand. Yeah. That hand's amazing. Fans are just about everything he can play early game. Despite, I think, is one of the most important cards in any matchup right. in this deck. Yes. Maybe not in the opening hand, but... No, in the opening hand. It's the best card in the deck, I think. Yeah. It, uh, it kills them on turn six, and it <laughs> keeps you alive up until then. Yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, hopefully he draws them again. <laughs> cool Taskmaster, Whirlwind, waste the pro proc execute, but uh, the only difference between like the utilization of Shield Slam in this Patron Warrior versus the like, Control Warrior is the Shield Maidens. Uh, every, all the other tools are still there. He runs double Shield Block, he runs double Armor Smith, so right. he's got reliable ways to be an armor. Oh man, hopefully he draws a Dust Bite for that. It's uh, still going to be good with the Whirlwind, though, and the Taskmaster. This is one of the matchups yeah. where Patron is, like, definitely a strong card. Oh, there we go. That's why. You got it back. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> it's a matchup where it's definitely a strong card, but the reason that Handlock is considered slightly favored against Patron is because it actually has the tools to, to beat a Patron draw. It plays Hellfire, plays right. Shadow Flame. Yep. So you're not just dead when they go off. But sometimes you are. Sometimes they have Frothing Berserker, and then right. you're wondering why you're not playing Patron. <laughs> Well, he's got a pretty good curve. He's got Twilight Drake into Tap Mountain Giant. Yep. Um, so cute here. Trump is not in as awkward of a position as he was in like that first game against the Rogue, where oh yeah, where he had like no draws except for the turn four Twilight. Turn four Twilight Drake that just got sapped, and then he can play it again for the rest of the game. Yep. What is he debating here? He's got some options. I guess he's debating whether to use coin on the armor. Mm -hmm. Or attack over two turns. Right. I don't... I think you want to save your armor for your Shield Slam. But... You can Shield Slam Coin Fire Okay. Works. Yeah, this, I, I like that. this. It's a good play. Yeah. Makes use of the weapons, too. Because his hand's really clunky with weapons. Yeah, it's exactly. Two Fiery War Axes and Death Spite. The Fiery War Axe, usually in Handlock, is used like later in the game to like just equip so you threaten more damage. Mm -hmm. To force them to play a little bit more inefficiently. Um, so getting value out of that early, getting use out of it at all early is pretty good. Absolutely. Definitely nice that he could attack that turn. This Sludge Belcher is really great here from Trump. Like, Kiki doesn't have a great way to deal with that. You don't want to execute it. No, you definitely do not. No, you don't want to use your, your Whirlwind on it with a patron in hand. You don't have the mana to Despite Taskmaster, so... Maybe he ends up attacking it over two turns, but, I mean, that's going to mean it's a nine damage Sludge Belcher that's eating weapon charges. That's a... Pretty strong card. There's one thing that he wants to make sure he does, and that's make sure he gets below 30 health at some point in the early so game. Right. right, he wants that draw, right? This yeah. is like the one drawback of playing shield block, because I've thought of doing this, but when I've tried it, my, my battle rage is dead. Yeah. Like the entire game, because 
yeah, a lot of games you just end up armoring turn two or turn three or turn four, and then you never fall below 30. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that's a pretty big deal. You say, oh, it's only one card, but sometimes yeah. the, the only potential that you have for it is like two cards, and that one card can make a world of difference at certain points in the game. So yeah, Battle Rage wins games. Have we seen that card in Kiki's deck? Maybe he runs both. both. We have, yeah. He runs both. two. Yeah, definitely. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's very draw heavy. Yep. He runs no mission inventors as well. Mm -hmm. He doesn't run Azure Drakes, which is a card yep. that we've seen some players who run the draw heavy Patron Warrior run. Um, like uh, Oskaka did it as, w as well in, in one of his weeks mm -hmm. uh, that he played Patron Warrior. So Chang as well. Chang, yeah. Yeah. He ran the Miracle Patron Warrior. He did, yeah. That was interesting. It was all draw. It was all in on the, the Frothing Berserker. <laughs> did it have uh, Gadgets in? Yeah, it did, I believe. It had one Gadgets in auction in. Oh, man. Yeah. So it was it was all in. There we go. Well, running your face into Mountain Giant is one way to get below 30. <laughs> yep. He's even got a shield block to bring him back up. Yep. So the order of the draws here matters, and the order of the usage here matters. Definitely like that play from Kiki. Well, it's not a bad turn to play Sylvanas. It's not going to die to that death by charge, and it's really important here. Mm -hmm. Besides the shield blocks, Koyuki hasn't drawn into any so card draw. So doesn't have Battle Rages yet. Hasn't drawn into Acolytes yet. Uh, no no Mission Venners yet, so... His hand is starting to get a little bit... Oh, there oh, we go. Speaking of the... Right on time. Mm -hmm. There's just so much card draw. You're bound to draw something. Battle Rage, Acolyte of Pain, No Mission Venner, Shield Block. Is it just ridiculous to the Patron here? Probably. Just Patron? Just, I mean, the first one's one. getting AoE'd anyway, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like... That's true. Maybe you, you just get it out now. Usually in this matchup, you can throw out patrons willy nilly because you're just saying, oh, I'm just going to get killed anyway. They're going to get half fired or yeah. shadow flame. Right. I mean, if he ends up hell firing on, on seven mana, it's a really inefficient turn for handlock. And mm -hmm. you make it like it's the least likely it'll ever be that Trump doesn't have one of those because it's early. It's earlier in the game now. The longer right. it goes, the longer or like the more likely it becomes that handlock has one of those AoE cards. That does not feel very nice. <laughs> I don't understand that. I guess, oh, he's saving the whirlwind for the patron? Yeah, okay. Yeah, he's saving the patron. He's just going for a bigger patron. I mean, which is a fine play, but I mean, the odds are the patron's going to just die anyway, no matter how many you make. So I feel like getting card draw out of the accolades really important here. Yeah, so absolutely. throwing it out there without activating at least one draw is just asking to get right dark bomb. Dark bomb. <laughs> I mean, he's lucky that's not an owl. Yeah, because at least he gets one out of it. But right. that's still his hand is not very strong. He does draw on a Warsaw commander, so that's one of the key cards of his combos. But he's nowhere near killing Trump. Oh, the other execute comes back. That's it is important for the bigger taunts later in the game. So if you shield blocks here, that eliminates the Grim Patron right. opportunity. Four mana, shield block again. All right, well, he's, he's getting some of this uh, some of this cycle going on. Mm -hmm. All right, battle rage. So is he going to go for the execute right now? That's really the question. I think waiting is fine. If you wait, you can battle rage, but you can't execute. Right. I would probably wait in Battle Rage for four cards next turn. That just seems better. He's really making Grand Banger here. It's actually course. only for three cards, but yeah. still. Yeah, three cards. Maybe he draws Inner Rage. I mean, the Cycle Heavy lists usually do play Inner Rage, but we haven't seen that at Kyuki yet. Most he, people. Uh, he runs one Inner Rage. Okay. One. Yeah. Most, it's a little bit interesting. Yeah, most players favor that card to Grill Taskmaster just because. You know, you're really playing Taskmaster for the, the battle cry, not the down no two. Yeah, really early, early in the day today, we saw a match between Koyuki and, I believe, Demigod, where it was Freeze Mage versus Page Warrior, and we went to Fatigue. So, oh, yeah. oh, wow. <laughs> we saw every single card in Koyuki's deck. There is that inner rage. Yep. That is a huge draw. Are you <laughs> kidding me? That just drew him, like, a million extra cards off Battle Rage, didn't it? Yeah, because now he yeah. can... Uh, Grim Patron. He plays one? That is the best possible draw in his deck. That's like zero mana sprint. That's true, because now, okay, so he can get... Zero mana sprint, I think. 
it's well if it's even if he wants to do it right like he sick no. he could go for a big battle rage but he could also just not and just like save it for maybe a big frothing berserker mm -hmm. i would go in so maybe just use like one whirlwind effect because you can play grim patron in a rage one of them and then attack in so then you're left with four grim patrons um, oh, yeah. two of which are damaged and then you draw three cards because having the whirlwind effects is actually really important because that's like the only way you kill a handlock no. right. is by making really big turns later on with like frothing berserker or, or maybe even grim patrons if you can get wow. them long enough <laughs> interesting well that's <laughs> through all of our theories out the door yeah. but <laughs> i mean it's not that bad of a play it's just it's like a two mana sprint where you draw three less cards <laughs> right that's that's a good description well I, I mean if his deck does play a lot of card draw i guess it you know he's it's expecting to about get it. into more of it i mean emperor is pretty big part of getting off your huge uh, frothing berserker turns and he already has the war song in hand he has the whirlwind in hand so basically two combo pieces of the frothing berserker combo got reduced there if you draw emperor there i do agree with this play but i might have gone for, for drawing the whole deck yeah if you draw emperor like if the, if you know your next card is emperor then you do this i mean but even if, uh, yeah, done. yeah e even uh if a play looks like it's immediately not quite as good as another play um the overall game plan might be better to do it this way like maybe he, he recognizes that the only way he wins is like a big frothing berserker burst or a patron burst turn and if that's the case he needs to save that inner rage you yeah. can't just use it to draw cards that don't win in the game yeah All right I've got the beast in my side. My you play a lot of Patron Warrior Dominus? I do not actually. Um, I've played maybe like five games. <laughs> you can't count to 30. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, what what, uh, what draws you away from it? Um, I don't know actually. I just have never, haven't got around to playing it as much. Yeah. I definitely need to though. It's a really tough deck to master. Right. Because yeah. there's a lot of situations where you go into and you're like, oh my goodness. There's. It, Having the right play is mm. so hard because almost every single play you make with that deck is subjective. Right, exactly. There's, a, I can see from it now. There's a lot of different options you can ever play. Is there a chance that uh, Trump is dead right here? Is he dead? Wait, he gets the heal from the zombie chow. So if he attacks in, he'll take the five. No, he can pile it on. Everyone get in here. Everyone. All right, so this is Everyone. that's nine. I'll be able to armor smith. Yeah, first. I'm si so what? What is he planning to use that two mana for if it's not armor smith? If he's gonna armor up, he would have gained ten times the amount of armor. Oh. That would have been a lot of armor. Oh well, he's gonna armor up instead of armor smith. I don't understand. Again. I'm just upset. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm just upset. Koiki, what are you doing Wait. to me? Oh, my God. Ooh. Ugh. That happened. All right. Uh, well, was I think Trump just wins now. Like, I think just Hellfire gets played and the game is over. Yep. He has two cards in hand. It's... There's no way to draw a million cards left because he cycled Battle Rage. You just play a heal bot after Hellfire? Right. I mean... It... I mean, you, you could, like, AFK for two turns and still win, I think. <laughs> <laughs> you hunger jump? You want a snack? Mm. Wow. All right. I mean, Trump's going to think through all his options. There are a lot of ways to go with this. But I, I do think Hellfire Heelbot's probably the way to go. Puts him at 22. Koyuki only has two cards in his hand, so the damage possibility is not very high. Even something like a Gromosh wouldn't really... Do much for you at this point. Yeah. Oh, That's rough. Amazing. And he just ends up playing the armorsmith this turn. That is. Can't imagine that was planned. Yeah, I mean it's it's not even the it's not even like the armorsmith that would have made that big of a difference. It's just like not whirlwinding doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Like you you either Okay, if you're gonna burn your entire hand on a combo, it better be lethal or it better like win the game if they don't have the sweeper. In this case, it wasn't it wasn't really either of those cases. Yeah. Right. 
That's also something you can do if you battle raged up to like a 10 card hand. You can use like half of them and force them to have the sweeper. But yeah, in this case, it definitely so didn't work out. Possibilities. All right, Dom, is this Dr. Boom getting played? Is it time for the yellow Dr. Boom? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> that may be. I don't think so, but. Uh, you got to go for a shadow flame, I think. <laughs> yeah, definitely. He's only got one card left in his hand. Just gonna I just got taunt up. up. Yeah, yeah, it's more Which... aggressive, but it's fine. Shields up. Definitely not a bad play. Yeah, it puts 10 damage on the board. If he attacks into anything, it sets him up for lethal next turn with Draxus. If Kiki draws Brawl off this, Frothing Berserker wins. I think he still loses the game, though. Like, maybe Black Knight. Pass me that Black Knight banner. I'm not sure it's in the deck. All right, well, we've seen two executes used, so it's not going to be a huge help. This has to be the best card in the entire deck. <laughs> well, well, that's one of them. It's actually not bad, yeah. No, Shield Slam does stuff. I strike. Yeah, but when you're throwing your froth, Frothy Berserker in like this, you got no cards in your hand, you're having to use it to kill a giant. Good thing about this, he's gaining absurd amounts of armor, he's cycled a little bit through his deck. Bad thing, he's still in a pretty rough spot. And the animations are cool, though. Yeah, there you, go. there you go. The best kind of BM in the game is when you have, like, double Frothing Berserker in play, maybe an Armorsmith, and you just, like, queue all your Whirlwinds and swing for lethal, and they sit there watching for, like, three minutes while they can't concede. <laughs> you drop your headset <laughs> and just really walk sad. away from the computer. Yeah. All that counting. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I play Grim Page and Warrior. You just sort of like, I don't even count. I think that's what happened when I played you on ladder and you were playing Grim Page and just made me watch all day. So those <laughs> yeah. numbers got counted. I didn't even count either. <laughs> yeah. I just said, oh, I got two Frothing Berserkers it's on nice. board and a couple Whirlwind Let's effects. So Pretty big number. You, you, you slowly point the Frothing Berserk at the face, yes. hoping for the skull. You're like, is it? Okay, skull, we're good. I got this. Well, Trump's going to take his time, make sure there's absolutely no way he can lose this game, but. He is already in the lead. He got uh, he got this matchup, which he needed to get, and yeah, it looks like he's going to be taking the series. Yeah, this is pretty devastating for Koyuki here. Um, hasn't had the best of series this last two series here. Losing this game would mean he's out of the tournament. All right. Yeah, I mean, how many cards does Koyuki have left in his deck? Maybe if he drew the second Battle Rage and Trump didn't kill his stuff. See if we can get our magical. I believe he has like about ten or nine. Magical spectator hand. Our Actually, Berserker is important. Here we go. Yeah, draw Battle nice. Rage. Draw the deck. Well, it's not quite good enough. Well, let's see. He's gonna be going to 20, 22 if he wants. Ouch! Strike. Quickie just looks pretty defeated right now. He's just sort of going through the motions, hoping that he draws into something, a miracle play, but... Yeah. He's got Frothy Berserker. He's got chances to make that thing big. Make something huge, definitely. There's only been one war song played so far, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, let's say Trump doesn't kill him and both of his Boombots stay alive. Maybe he draws war song, Patron. Patron bumps into Boombot. Boombot hits a Patron. Everyone gets in here. <laughs> Would that, uh... That might do it! Some crazy stuff could happen. You never know. To the face for four. Okay. That's about how this game has been going. Yeah. If you could sum this game up in one in one uh, sentence, it'd be... Boombot to the face for four. <laughs> Seven points of business coming to Yuki's way. And that is probably going to lock it up. Pledge Belcher heal bot going to eliminate all the outs, I think. I what think can so. he even draw? I don't think there's anything. Deathwing would be all right. De eh. Deathwing is always nah, there. No, it gets BGH. That's true. Two, B two Deathwings in a row probably do it. <laughs> two Deathwings in a row. There yep. you go. That's all. That's what Koiki <laughs> needs to win this game. Only two Deathwings in a row. Brings himself back up to 13 health. Leaves 11 damage on the board. There's a lot of things that would kill him. Even just Duraxis. Feels yeah. like a stylish finish is uh, is in order here pretty soon. It does let you switch up emotes. Even if Kayuki squelched uh, Gul'dan, <laughs> once Draxus is played, you have to re-squelch. And you have that really? 
few seconds where they have no squelch counterplay, yeah. where you can make Just them face your asses. Yeah. As a serial squelcher yourself, yes. yep. Raynad, you're, you're an expert. From experience. All right, well, the well plates come out. Trump is going to move on to the playoff stage. He's going to take second place in Group A. But unfortunately, Koyuki has been eliminated from the Hearthstone Legendary Series Season 2. Players shake hands wow. and give each Get other hug. a hug. These guys are two of the uh, longest standing veterans in the Hearthstone scene. These guys have been playing the game since uh, the game uh, pretty much came out. So yeah. Yeah. it's good to see that, that sort of sportsmanship between these two comrades. That's yeah, great. They both, you know, even ma making it this far is fantastic. Like, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely strong play all around, and I like their decks a lot. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, Trump, pretty convincing, pretty convincing series, and really liked his lineup. Like the just to not bring patron and just bring decks he's comfortable with. It's a really cool strategy. Yeah. All right. Well, let's take a look at the bracket from Group A since that was the last match that we'll be seeing today. We saw Demigod and Trump face off. Demigod took that one three to one. Then of course Koyuki. Defeated Kabi uh, with that 3-2. Um, and, of course, in the losers match, Trump took out Kabi 3-1. And, of course, the two players that will be moving on to the playoff stage from this group are Trump and Demigod. Now, um, Domdis, I want to get your opinions on these two players. Uh, after seeing these guys as decks, after seeing them them face off with, with the rest of the players from Group A over the, the past couple hours, do you think these guys are, are going to be having a lot of success in the playoff stage? Oh yeah, definitely. I think either of them has a good chance to take it. Um, they've shown that they're both very comfortable with their decks. They didn't. Both of them didn't tailor their decks towards you know just the best decks. They definitely brought what they're comfortable with. Like Demigod brought Heal it in, and then obviously Trump brought the three that he's just most comfortable with. And I think that says a lot about their confidence in their abilities with the decks they're comfortable with, not having to stretch it to just playing the best decks. So I think they have a great chance. Right now, are you scared to face off potentially against Trump later on in the tournament if you make it through your group? <laughs> Terrified. Terrified. Who is not terrified of the mayor of Value Town? Yeah. It's Fear definitely. Him. All right. Well, Domdis, I, I want to get your thoughts on, on moving forward. Are, are you excited to play next? Because this is going to be your last game on the, the casting desk because right. you're going to have to actually start get playing Hearthstone. Yeah. <laughs> you looking forward to it? Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to it. It should be a lot of fun. Excited to get my first big LAN game in there. Hopefully, you know. They'll get the jitters or anything like that. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for joining us on the casting desk. It was thank nice you for having me. me. Awesome. Uh, we do have a winner's interview with Trump up on the stage. So let's uh, send it over to Dan. Thank you very much, TJ, Raynad, and Domus. I'm joined by Trump, who advanced to the round of eight in second place. It's a little tight. Originally, we started off the day rocky, but we made it. Uh, and overall, a job well done. So just give me some thoughts on the series overall with how it went with Koyuki. Oh, my gosh. I won. All right. That was, it was really exciting. Kuyuki is a really tough opponent. Um, after I dropped the first one, it was a scramble. I managed to out mind game him each time and pick the right one. Or maybe my randomness was just better than his randomness. Who knows? Uh, the games were good. Yeah, overall, well done. I can't wait to see that reaction in the Trump reacts to more things video 2015. So Trump, uh, you know, now that you've gotten to the round of eight, that's you know a pretty good showing here so far. Considering that, uh, again, you're able to start showing more consistency throughout tournaments, getting top eight. Uh, what's your realistic goal throughout the tournament? Is it to win the whole thing? Is it to try and get some more world championship points as time goes on? Is there a specific thing that you have in mind? I think when anyone comes into a tournament, their goal is to go as far as they can. Some people might say, like, I'm, I'm going for number one, but I'm just going to go as far as I can, really happy to make it this far, hoping to go further. And perhaps the side goal is to prove that I can crush Patron Warrior. That's right, without playing it yourself. Some people say, well, I'll crush Patron Warrior, uh, but I'll, I'll put it in my own lineup. So props to you. Again, the cast was giving you shout-outs. Uh, I guess the last question is, what are you going to do with all this downtime now that uh, you've advanced to day three? You're not going to be playing tomorrow. Oh, it's going to be nice to relax a bit. I was, uh, I'm uncharacteristically nervous, but getting the jitters off after winning now, get some downtime, like you said, it's going to be really nice. Uh, get to visit all the people who are coming to watch, get to talk with the players, maybe cast, who knows. That's right, your Trump, your Trump uh, casting has actually been getting a lot better too, so I've been seeing you do some online invitations. It'd be awesome to see you cast as well. So congratulations, Trump. Uh, you advanced to the round of eight. 
And that'll be an opportunity to see you in day number three. So uh, with that, guys, we're done with group A. Can you believe it? We're halfway through the day. We have one more group to go. That's five more matches. And as Dom this was alluding to, he'll be also playing in just a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a commercial break. When we come back, more Hearthstone action here at the Hearthstone Season 2 Land Finals for the Legendary Series.